Okay. Get my toys out of here, all these wires. Okay. Okay. One thing I didn't mention, if there's... He's hearing my voice. Um, <laughs> One thing I didn't mention, if there's any points I didn't bring up or if you, you know, I didn't ask a question, but you want to address a certain thing or say something, just stop me and say, mm -hmm. wait a minute, I would like to go on about that, you know, so, um, okay. just like you would in a regular conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so let's uh, start with just setting, setting the stage. Bob, what is, uh, just give me your name, your address, and today's date. Oh, my name is Bob Murray. Address is one one twenty six ten West eighty first place in Lenexa. And what was the other? Lenexa, Kansas. And Next today's Kansas. date is what is it? The oh, uh, fourteenth. Fourteenth of January. Yeah, fourteenth yeah, of 14. January and oh two. Two thousand two. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Bob, where were you born? In Bremer, Missouri. It's a small town in north central Missouri. Okay, Edie, where were you born? I was born in Colony, Kansas, southern Kansas. Bob, what were you doing in, I mean, why was the family in Bramer, Missouri? <clears throat> Couldn't get it. <laughs> well, no, we, uh, my dad was uh, a mason, yeah. bricklayer, plasterer, and did that kind of work. And his brother, he and his brother worked together, and they, uh, we were born and raised uh, a few years in Polo. And, uh, but that was more work was available, I think, in Bremer, and mm -hmm. we moved there. And I was quite young at the time. Mm -hmm. What? Uh, so, your 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 father, your family, they were mace. They worked. They were masonry. Or yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What? Uh, and that's all. All he did. I mean, at that, I mean, was he anything else? Well. And what was his name? John. John Murray. Right. Mm-hmm. But. Uh, it it uh, that was their trade, mm -hmm. and of course, in, in the early thirties and up to almost the forties, uh, you did whatever you could find. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, but that uh, their their profession was masonry, mm -hmm. and uh, they loved that. They loved uh, doing the building and doing that kind of stuff. I wanted to ask you what's your date of birth. Uh, July 20, 25. 80. What's your date of birth? February the 8th, 23. Okay. Um, what did your father's do? Well, tell me about way back. I mean, what your what your grandfather do? What was his name? Where did he live? Well, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, he he died and and uh, well, in an age where uh, I never did know him, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and my grandmother did too on dad's side, and he uh, he had two brothers, and and uh, that was a uh, total family on his side. Of course, his other brother that uh, uh, he worked with, he had eight children, I think it was, and we had eight children, so we had a lot of cousins. And, stuff to work with. Built yeah. a labor force. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were from the same area, Bramer, Polo? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. Are those, are those two towns close to each other? The town is full of Murray's. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's about 15 mile mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. space. And uh, yeah, there was a, a lot of Murray's. Of course, uh, Dad's brother that he worked with, he was, he was about, uh, Probably seven or eight years older than my dad, mm -hmm. and of course he was kind of the boss. Mm -hmm. But uh, he was was married and and uh, had two children, two boys, and then his wife died, and he remarried, and then then had eight eight more. So boy, yeah, and uh, times have changed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it really has quite a little bit. But uh, seemed like big families. Even though it was bad times there in the 30s, that that uh, you always enjoyed yourself, mm -hmm. 
big, you know, and uh, we uh, we never starved. Mm -hmm. And uh, but uh, it, big, big families are fun. We almost had our own basketball team. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk more about what people did for fun back in those days, but I didn't want to fall behind with with E. You were raised in. I got a note here that says you were born and raised in Colony, Kansas. Colony, Kansas. Where's that? Small town. What's down south by Iola? She knew mm -hmm. down in yeah. that, on the that west, area. Yeah, the west side and uh, almost mm -hmm. about halfway down the state line, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And cool. it's a town. Of, it was a small town of probably 500 people. Or what, was so. your, what was your maiden name? Dryden. Dryden. Mm-hmm. What'd your What'd your uh, folks do for a living? My father was a, a farmer and an oil driller. An oil driller? Yes. He did that and, and we always lived, well, we didn't always live in the country, but he always had farmed mm -hmm. and he did oil drilling along with it. He'd, he'd sometimes have to go out of state even to Oklahoma mm -hmm. or someplace mm -hmm. where they drill oil wells. And that's how he raised us eight children, the rate of us. And not eight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, you had to work. <laughs> what, did, what did his parents do? And what were their I names? Never, I never knew my grandfather Dryden either. He was dead when I was born. Mm -hmm. And I knew my grandmother Dryden. And she lived in southern Kansas too, in Earlson, <coughs> Kansas. And she was a sweet little old lady. We used to have to talk to her with a yep. in her ear. Mm -hmm. And then my mother's family was Lamb, and I knew both of them, but they were just farmers mm -hmm. in the country. Mm -hmm. My grandfather and grandmother both. And my grandmother died quite young, but my grandfather lived till I was probably 18, and he lived with us part of the time. Mm -hmm. And you say he was a farmer? He was a farmer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, what were the crops? Crops. What were they? What were they? Just basic corn and wheat. Corn and wheat. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. Milo and <laughs> things mm -hmm. like that. Um, do you have any stories, Bob, about your about your mom or your dad that you you know think are particularly noteworthy, or any pearls of wisdom he dropped on you? Or <laughs> well, <clears throat> you have a fun one about hmm? the oatmeal. I know that. Oh yeah. I don't know yeah, one time. Uh, Mom was ill, and and Dad was he going to fix breakfast, and and we had in those days we had oatmeal and and toast and jelly and that kind of stuff every day, every morning, and so Dad fixed the oatmeal and and uh, he put too much salt in the water, and uh, so we started eating it. We started complaining and. <laughs> He made sure that we ate it all. <laughs> <laughs> he made it, you're going to eat it. <laughs> you bet, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, any Anything in particular mm -hmm. outside of that, that, that everything was pretty well routine. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was, what was discipline? Discipline was there? What was the discipline? How was that enforced in a family with that many kids? Well, uh, we had a little uh, episode there one time. We we were supposed to go to the church in the afternoon and and uh, uh, going to have Bible school. Mm -hmm. So we got down in the pasture area, uh, not too far from where we lived, and. He got to playing and and, uh, and 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 chasing or picking up turtles and all that kind of stuff and forgot where we were and, and all of a sudden when we got home, mom had a long switch that she took and just got off of the tree, waiting for us. <laughs> and she, <laughs> she chased us around that house for quite a little while, and we got the message. <laughs> yeah, didn't do that again. <laughs> yeah, no. And, uh, mm -hmm. What was what was the what was a typical dinner like? You talk about breakfast. What you what was and the uh, e dinner? Yeah, in in those days it was breakfast, supper. I mean, de breakfast, uh, lunch, and dinner mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. supper. Supper, yeah. And uh, the the supper was, was the when everybody sat down, 
and and at the table, and uh, it of course with uh, all those that many kids around the table, the mom was up getting stuff and putting it on the table as much as she was eating, mm -hmm. and that was that was pretty well routine though, hmm. every every night. And what kind of stuff was it like? Oh, it would vary from fried chicken to uh, uh, stew, uh, uh, just uh, meat and mashed potatoes and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, I never will forget that uh, uh, my brother John, he, he, he kind of a prank, prankster. <laughs> but anyway, he uh, she put a jar of jelly on the table that one evening and. And John got kind of overcome with that and on his bread, and he almost had that jar of jelly on one piece of bread. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and uh, but uh, he uh, he quit that. Yeah, that'll cure you. Mm -hmm. A little bit mm -hmm. too much jelly. Yeah. What about Edie? What was a what was it like when you were growing up with that big family? What what kind of stuff you well, eat for breakfast? Well, I, I remember we had uh, our table was a long table, but on either side we had a bench. Mm -hmm. there were eight of <laughs> yeah. us and there were benches. <laughs> and we had basic food. My father always, uh, we always, they butchered, uh, mm -hmm. usually pig yeah. was what we would butcher and then they would hang it up in the smokehouse and and you'd have meat all, all uh -huh. year round and pork and uh, bacon and, and uh, we'd have a lot of chickens. Our mothers would Mm -hmm. Chickens. It was just basic food. We always had gardens. You always had your own gardens. Mm -hmm. We had green mm -hmm. beans, all the vegetables like that. Mm -hmm. Just, just, just very basic food: meat, potatoes, and vegetable. And sounds like you grew a lot of it yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, a lot of it was. So, what'd you go to the grocery store for? Oh, flour, flour sugar, sugar, mm -hmm. yeah, stuff you couldn't. Sugar yeah. and. Basic and stuff. I think both of our mothers probably made bread every day. Oh yeah, it was mm -hmm. just a basic. You'd come home from <laughs> school and maybe they'd be hot cinnamon rolls or mm -hmm. something like that. It was just the way of life. I it can remember my uh, mom used to. If she had any biscuits left, she put it in the cabinet up high, and and uh, we would run home after school. And the first thing we'd do is hit that thing and get a couple of biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't get in trouble for that. It was, it was, no, she 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 had them there just. She kind of knew that that was for mm -hmm. you guys. Yeah. Not really, mothers. I can remember my mother. She made biscuits almost every morning. Every day. That was our. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With our breakfast, mm -hmm. we didn't have toast. We had biscuits. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let me uh, let me stop for a moment, and, and I just don't want this glare in your glasses. All right, we're back. Mm -hmm. It's like a talk show. We're back. Yeah. Oh. All right. Sorry for the interruption. I won't do it again. <laughs> um, okay, so, Bob, you're growing up in Bramer. Mm -hmm. And you're, let's say you're 13. What do you do for laughs in Bramer, Missouri, <laughs> in uh, 1938? Well, what's going? I mean, what, what does a what does a kid do for for amusement? I mean, what kind of sports were you involved in, for example? Well, yeah, we uh, and, and at that day and age, uh, we had um, basketball and baseball. We didn't have football, mm -hmm. and uh, of course, we had in uh, school we had gym and we had volleyball and basketball and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's that's uh, in spring and summer, of course, with baseball. Mm -hmm. And some of that was uh, we just made up a team ourselves, and it wasn't uh, at our age level. At that age level, we didn't have organized baseball. It was just pick up games. Yep, yeah. mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. And uh, we almost had our own basketball team. <laughs> I guess so. Let me adjust this light so I can slip down on you. Okay, that's all right. The um, Edie, what did you do? I mean, that age. Um, well, I belonged to the uh, 4-H club. <laughs> Stay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we had, we had to help at home a lot. My mm -hmm. mother canned a lot. 
Mm -hmm. And we had to help do that. And I can remember a job that I just hated. The milk separator, the cream separator. That when you milked, you'd separate the cream from the mm -hmm. milk. And uh, we would have to wash that thing every morning. It was always outside in the summertime. And there were a whole lot of discs on it, probably 50, I don't know. And you had to wash every one of those. What's it? What, what's a disc? What do you mean? It's just like a, like a Separator. little inverted uh, <coughs> triangular thing, you know, metal. They're mm -hmm. metal. They're, mm -hmm. they're, they're real thin, and they fit on top of each other. And that kind of separated it in some way. But those had to be washed every day in the summertime. <laughs> and I hated that job. But we had fun. We'd go to church, and we did, uh, well, w once in a while we'd get to go to a movie. Mm -hmm. And we had a roller skating rink at, in our town mm -hmm. that was very popular. And then with a big family, you, you didn't have to worry about what you did. There was always someone to, <laughs> to just... Sometimes we did nothing, but we had to work and help at home a lot. So did you go to the movies? Once in a while, we had mm. uh, we didn't always have a movie in our town, but sometimes we did, and we'd go then, or, or we'd go to Iola, Kansas, which was twelve miles away. But that was a big trip in those days. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Those cars. Sometimes we'd go to Iola to get a permanent, or our mother'd take us, and. Uh, I can remember we'd always buy candy kisses, not the kind of candy kisses now that you have. They were peanut butter. You remember those, Bob? Mm-hmm. <coughs> Good. Kind of a chewy candy in a wrapper. Yeah. And that was a treat for us. We'd always get to bring home something like that. But uh, did uh, so you speak about it was a big trip to go 12 miles? Yeah. Oh, Why was oh it a yeah. Big trip. Well, of course, <coughs> probably a Model A was for what we drove then. And it just took time to go 12 miles. Mm -hmm. It just took a lot of time to do it. What was it? Was the road not? No, the, the road was. Uh, some of them were dirt roads, some gravel roads, you know. And then not. get over around Chillicothe, it was a paved road for a little bit. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, it just took longer to do something because yeah. you didn't drive. We didn't fast. have the the time either to do that because mm -hmm. uh, you were working and whatever. yeah. Yeah. We Every one of us kids had paper routes at yeah. one time or other. And uh, my first job was uh, at, uh, we had a shoe repair man there, and uh, I got to sweep out his store and off the, and the sidewalk in front mm -hmm. and uh, go down to Public Well and get a bucket of water. And I was so little at that time. I carry that away then I'd have to wait and stop <laughs> and carry it and, and, and I got to where I he had a shoe repair and I he taught me quite a bit on that that was that was a nice trade really but uh, I had more aspirations than that I thought then uh, but uh, so yeah, back when you were a kid you thought you know I uh, had a dime a morning did what? Get a dime a morning. Dime a morning. And I, I expanded into the, the store next to me. Mm -hmm. So I got 20 cents more. Boy, I was a big time stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, what would 20 cents buy? Well, you could get uh, yeah, two candy, candy bars, bars and yeah. two bottles of Pepsi Cola. Mm -hmm. And uh, remember the, the deal, and I still use it. I don't know whether they do it today or not, but. Pepsi Cola is, you know, twice as much for a nickel too, and then the Coke, you know, and they were almost twice as big. Mm -hmm. Really? And uh, I didn't know that. Yeah. But they're mm -hmm. always the same size. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And we, we in summertime we mowed a lot of yards, plus taking care of gardens and stuff, mm -hmm. and the old push mower. Yeah, yeah, they weren't gas mowers. Yeah, and mowers. we dreaded the time when the the water grass come on, because it, it's so hard to push. Of course, those days you didn't have fancy lawns, you know, and uh, the watercrafts gets thick and you can't really mow it. And, uh, but uh, we, like everybody else, we, we did a lot of things. Mm -hmm. I can remember my basics on piano were learned from a, a lady there. We had an old piano, but didn't really know how to play. And in order to pay for my lessons, though, I had to clean her house. 
Mm -hmm. And I can remember that, but, but it was good, I guess. <laughs> was there a lot of bartering of services like that? Like, I, you were good at one thing and someone does something for you in exchange? or? Uh, yeah, I suppose to a certain extent. I don't know. Uh, just because money was so dear? Oh, yeah. Days, you know? Yeah, and yeah. they were all just the same. You mm -hmm. know, some yeah. people didn't have as large of families, but most of our friends did have families. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Nobody had a lot of stuff, but we all had a, all the comforts we needed. And yeah, you never felt happy. like you were poor, mm -mm. you know. Because everybody, so everybody else in the same boat. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we just all had fun and went mm -hmm. to school and, and mm -hmm. uh, went to ball games. The ball games, yeah. You, um, when you were growing up, Bob, did you have a phone in the house? No. How long, how, how far along were you before a phone was in your life, you know, when you had a phone wherever you were? I was probably a sophomore in high school, maybe. And they put one in the house at that point? Mm -hmm. Do you remember the phone number? No. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably two, two, three or yeah. something. You know? <laughs> they were those kind that were on the wall. Yeah. You did know, you have to, like, did you pick it up yeah. and talk to the operator or crank yeah. it and all that? Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. The operator comes on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. did, you, did you listen on the party line? No, I don't remember ever doing that. We were on a lot party. of jokes about that. Yeah, there, as I understand, it was a common thing <laughs> to listen in on the party line and mm -hmm. listen for the clicks to see who else was on there. Yeah, we uh, did not have a radio until I was about high school, and I remember the first time we had a radio. My father came home, and he had it underneath a jacket, and he brought that radio in, and we were thrilled to death. We never, we never had a radio. We mm -hmm. had a Victrola. Yeah, but we mm -hmm. played songs, but we did not have a radio. Didn't even think about it, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what did you listen to on the radio? Did you have favorite shows? Oh, we got so, yeah, we listened to Fibber McGee and oh. those type of... Uh, mm -hmm. Every evening. Yeah, And, uh, of course, Sunday, boy, that's, that's the tops. They had Jack mm -hmm. Benny and, and, and all of those mm -hmm. on Sunday evening, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, What was that when Jack Arms? Jack Arms? Jack Arms, an All-American all boy. Yeah, the yeah. end of the evenings. And... Uh, Hop along, Cassidy. Uh, I don't know. Shadow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We just sit well, around mm -hmm. like this, and you'd listen to the radio. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love a mystery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I you can hear those doors open up. Mm -hmm. You know. The creaking. Yeah. yeah. And and the beauty of that is, maybe six or seven of us listening to this, and each one of us had our own vision of what it was. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, but you had to use your imagination a lot yeah. more than. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Than television TV. just essentially mm -hmm. hands it to you. Here's right. what it is. Yeah. Right. Hope you like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, what was uh, Bob? What was Christmas like? What was the holidays like at home? Uh, <clears throat> when we were real, real young. Hmm? When, we, when, when we were real young, or, yeah. but I can remember uh, we'd always go to church on Christmas Eve, and I really looked forward to that because uh, we'd get a small bag of candy and one big orange and of course in those days even if you had the money the oranges weren't available you know uh, produce like it is today and uh, and I always remember that that, that, that big orange and uh, but that's uh, and then uh, one one Christmas Eve uh, my one of my brothers uh, had to, he was ill and had to stay home, and so my older brother then stayed with him, and we came home and <laughs> and John was telling us that Santa Claus had met in and he had a, and told us all about him and stuff and he hadn't been there, you know? <laughs> and and then my older brother said now uh, that Johnny he said, we, <laughs> we didn't see anybody. <laughs> But he wanted to make it look like he was having a good time too. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And, uh, <laughs> Boy, did you so you had a real tree? Did you have a real tree? In, uh, well, yeah, we we go out and cut one. Just cut it yourself. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. What and, did you do for? I mean, ref, I, I can't remember. What did you do um, right now? Nowadays, we put those little tiny lights and everything on it. What did you? Oh, you we would, we would make things. Make things. Paper, and hang them on paper there. rings and and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Mom would always have. Pop She'd make the paste and. And uh, you just uh, color stuff, crayons and that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. you know. And and uh, 
that uh, that was our tree. Edie, what about you? What about you? Well, uh, mine was very similar to that. We'd just cut a, a tree someplace mm -hmm. our own, mm -hmm. and whatever you had, you you just decorated it with whatever you. Mm -hmm. Those rings you put together, different things. We, we never had lights. Mm -hmm. I don't know that they had lights then. No, I don't think they did. I don't mm -hmm. recall. I don't recall lights. reading about that. Mm -hmm. And Christmas was not. Uh, we all looked forward to Christmas, and it was a lot like Bob's. We'd go to church, and mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. orange and bag of candy meant a lot to us. But um, is it, so that that was something both your families did. That uh, or is uh, that like some kind of tradition? Or I thought that was no, just no. It's just family. small towns. Yeah, it's small town. Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. They just did that, and mm -hmm. we, we would go caroling some mm -hmm. in our town. I remember that. It would be cold, and uh, Christmas wasn't that. We looked forward to it, but we never got much. Mm -hmm. You know, with that many children. You didn't get much. <coughs> Maybe something to wear, or, or we'd get dolls and, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. things to play with too. But you didn't get a lot of toys. You might get one or two mm -hmm. things, and that was it. Where, where did people go to buy toys? Iola. Iola. <laughs> Probably. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Chillicothe. Chillicothe, the big Or the town. catalog. Mm -hmm. the oh, yeah, catalog. catalog. Mm -hmm. Catalogs were mm -hmm. very popular then. Mm -hmm. Montgomery Ward and, and Sears both. And I don't know. Christmas was just like any other day then, as far as our meal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not like it was now, like it is now. Bob, do you have any close friends when you were a teenager or when you were a boy? Can you think of any of their names or? <clears throat> yeah, one of my uh, best friends, I guess, would be Gene Griffin. He and I, in fact, volunteered in the Marine Corps together. <laughs> yeah, and. Uh, there was several in there, as, uh, the Kellys and and um, McBees, and uh, and then uh, several of the farm kids. We had a lot of farm kids that come in the school in town, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, they were they were some good friendships in there. Mm -hmm. Stubble Fields and, and the Kellys were out there too, and uh, it was. Of course, we didn't know any better, and we had a good time. <laughs> Just as well. Mm -hmm. What about you, Edie? I had, I still have, keep in touch with some of my friends from school. One of them lives over in Kansas City, Betty Rose. Mm -hmm. I still mm -hmm. talk to her quite a bit. She's alone now, but I, we at Christmas we I exchange with about four or five of them still. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Hmm. One of them still lives in Colony. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Never got well, out. She got married. She married a bo boy from there, and they had 11 children. Oh, my. <laughs> what did cause that, do you think? I don't know. She looks great, though. <laughs> let, me, uh, let me go on to school a little bit. Mm -hmm. Bob, any particular teachers uh, stand out in your mind as being very <clears throat> helpful? or? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Seventh and eighth grade in our school, we had uh, we started out with, with uh, the first grade was in one room and the second grade was in a single room. The third and fourth was in a room. And fifth and sixth was in a room. Mm -hmm. the seventh and eighth was over to another building where the high school was, and we were getting ready to jump from there into high school. Mm -hmm. But she <clears throat> she was kind of a as we call it, a tough old gal kind yeah. of personality, you know. She didn't uh, put up with any nonsense, and uh, but she liked poetry, and she could can repeat poetry to the point where I was really, really liked it. Mm -hmm. And I never will forget that. That's, I guess that's where I learned to uh, enjoy poetry. And she, uh, she was good at it, mm -hmm. and. Uh, then there was a uh, uh, lady that had, had the English teacher, and uh, there again she was about the same type, uh, very stern, but but you learned a lot. Mm -hmm. I liked her, and, uh, and we had an, another one, uh, just a neat gal, and and, and uh, of course didn't know at that in those days that she was young, you know. And uh, she had uh, uh, about three, four different type of classes she taught, and 
So one morning, uh, one of my friends came to school and he, he'd had a mouse in a little box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <And> Trouble. <laughs> yep. And so we opened her, her desk drawer and, and, and he slipped this mouse in there and closed it. <laughs> so about die about half the time for the class to end, she opened up that drawer. <laughs> <laughs> we were we were a little oddery at times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was in high school days. What about you? Do you have any particular teachers that were influential? Uh, I had several that I liked real well. My home economics teacher I liked very well. He taught me sewing and my um, typing, that sort of mm -hmm. thing. I liked her real well. My literature English teacher I did not like that well. I was kind of afraid of her. She was a big old heavy set lady. <laughs> mm -hmm. And she she was a good teacher, but I just... This uh, didn't hit it off, no, did you? No, I didn't. Uh, yeah. Bob, what subjects did you... Were, you? were you good at some things and terrible at others? or? I like math. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, math and, and trigonometry and algebra and that. And, uh, uh, I think I enjoyed math more than anything else. Recess was good. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, uh, Anything you were just terrible at? That you just couldn't find any interest in? Well, uh, not really. I, uh, it seemed like we had good teachers, and and if you pay attention a little bit, you can get it all right there. You and and uh, but. Uh, I never, I never had any problems with, with uh, subjects. What about you, Edie? Did you, uh, did you have any? Uh... The one that I disliked the most, I would say, was science. <laughs> I never could get into science yeah. too much. I liked home economics, the cooking, and uh -huh. mm -hmm. and again the typing and uh -huh. shorthand and that sort of thing. Okay. If oh, yeah, all right, say you're in high school, Bob, and somebody has done something that they need to be disciplined for. What was discipline like? Well, <clears throat> uh, depends on the severity of it. Uh, it, uh, you'd be reprimanded, uh, you'd have to go to the, uh, the uh, principal, and uh, he, was, he was pretty firm, mm -hmm. and uh, you, you, if you if you got caught once doing something like that, you you need to be careful not to be caught again. Mm -hmm. And uh, but uh, the, he he was uh, he he was very stern, but you didn't worry about him because he was always uh, you you needed it when you got it, you know. Mm -hmm. And so it was uh, fair. discipline was kind of it was fair. Yeah, it was fair. Mm -hmm. But we had it though. Mm -hmm. Was there was were teachers. In administering discipline, were they allowed to have physical contact with with the students, like you know, no. paddle or anything like that? Well, uh, in, in this same uh, one we were, I was talking to the principal, he uh, prior to that he, he he taught a class, and uh, he would when when one of the students, he be a boy or a girl, if they did something really bad, he he take him in the closet and. And he'd grab you by the hair and go whack, you know. Across the face. <laughs> yeah. And we knew we heard the whack that it was over. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we, uh, he, he wasn't brutal or anything. He just, you know, he, he learned a lesson. Mm -hmm. And uh, he advanced on up to the principal of the school. And uh, he was, he was uh, one of the, uh, he, he, he'd have, in the time you got to the senior level, uh, then you were getting ready to look at the military. Mm -hmm. And he he would, things were going on, uh, he would call in the boys that were going to go into service and uh, let us know what was going on. One of them was a, was a, uh, uh, a naval uh, Officer training deal, that, uh, and uh, it's one of those deals where you, if you qualify and all that, and so that that worked out. To make a short story short, <clears throat> we went. Uh, my friend and I went and 
Kansas City and and uh, went to the Marine Corps headquarters there in downtown Kansas City and uh, uh, on, with with this information of, of this uh, type program and uh, so they told us that well yeah that that uh, that's the program we're working on they haven't been approved yet but you guys can and volunteer it if it if it uh, time you got out of high school if it's there fine if it isn't you're in the Marine Corps you know so he got into officers training is what it was why why the Marine Corps why'd you pick the Marines well I guess the one to pick the best <laughs> 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 and and uh, but uh, it's a better part of the Navy than <laughs> but uh, anyway the the uh, the Navy was was putting this program out and that's, yeah. that's the one and uh, so it, it we we got in, in hitchhiked into Kansas City and and uh, so we found a building where you know these big tall buildings where yeah. where the headquarters was and so as we went in and to, to the elevator and trying to figure out where we we're going uh, a major in the Marine Corps got on the elevator so we they, so we asked him he says I'll show you I'm sure, I'm sure he will. <laughs> he took us right in, yeah. and uh, that that program got approved, and, and and we did go through the whole program. Mm -hmm. And the uh, officer officer training. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I forget the question now, but that's no, all right. I was, uh, yeah. I mean, you were going where I was going to go next was was uh, World War Two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so you're 18 in 1943. Um, no, is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, what was it like? I mean, everybody, the, the country is united to fight against the, the Axis. Mm -hmm. And did what did you do to contribute to the war effort? I mean, Victory Guards. I mean, mm -hmm. what kind of stuff did the family do? Well, uh, they had they'd have drives uh, to bring in anything in metal, and we'd have in the middle of town we'd have great big sacks of the farmers would bring in a lot of stuff. Of, mm -hmm of uh, these metal rakes and plows and every, anything that they could and they'd take that and mill it down mm -hmm. you know and use it and uh, that was a big one then they they had a my mother worked in that uh, some food program and they did canning I think and stuff I don't know what they so did she, had, she worked she yeah. was one of the women that was working yeah and of course we were uh, at the time but I got aware of that. Uh, we were time for us to, to get on out, and and uh, but that's the two basic things I could remember, and uh, I'm sure they did a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And uh, but uh, I know she, mom was a four star. Uh, they'd have these deals you put in the window. Yeah, uh -huh. you had four and, kids in the military. Yeah, uh -huh. and uh, um, but that's. That's all I remember doing things, uh, help the war effort, you know. What'd you do, Edie? I mean, do you, what's your memory of the war period? Oh. Like, where, uh, for example, this is a good one. Where were you when, when you heard about Pearl Harbor? I was in Garnett, Kansas. It was on a Sunday. Some of us had driven up there just, and we heard it on the radio. And then I was in the service myself. You were. In the oh, Navy. since you were, that's right, you were the, I was in the Navy. You were a wave, right? And mm -hmm. before that, my brother had been killed in the army, and he was killed in February 1944. In, what? In the, the infantry, and in he was in uh, Italy. Italy. Mm -hmm. he, he was buried in Italy. Mm -hmm. And that was that kind of upset my parents terribly because he was a special. Mm -hmm. He was the second oldest old, boy. Second mm -hmm. oldest. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And. Uh, Big basketball player. He had a basketball scholarship, and he he was married. He was only 24, but he was married, no children. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't recall the colony them doing things. And then I was gone. I, I just don't mm -hmm. recall. I know people did gardening and so forth, but their lives are probably a little different because of his death. I don't know, but mm -hmm. I don't recall any any big things. Bob, where were you when you heard about Pearl Harbor? I was a senior in high school <clears throat> and uh, I know we uh, uh, 
I believe it, it was uh, fairly nice weather at that time. And we sat outside with the radio and listened to the our president on uh, his speech on that world, uh, Pearl Harbor. Dave Infamy speech? Mm -hmm. When he spoke mm -hmm. that December 7, 1941 was a, a day that will live in infamy? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really does. Yeah, and then we had a the, the uh, next day the school was on and they had everybody assembly and they uh, they I think they recorded that and and and, uh, and had that same speech mm -hmm. and uh, so we were all quite aware of what how disaster it was. Did you know? Did anybody had anybody ever heard of Pearl Harbor at that time? Mm -hmm. We hadn't. People had to go run to their globes and look it up. I mm -hmm. had read. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, and I know I've got it in here somewhere. Where were, you, Edie? Where were you based when you were in the waves? And what was it? What was it? What did you do in the waves? Uh, I was based. Uh, you originally went to Hunter College in New York City for your training. Mm -hmm. And then, well, first I went to Stillwater, Oklahoma, and they had taken over the college there. Mm -hmm. uh, and we went to a three-month school there. It was called a yeoman school, which was secretarial type mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. And then I was sent to uh, Hunter College in, in uh, New York. And I ended up, though, in Washington, D.C., in the Bureau of Ships. And I did office work the whole time. What's the Bureau and of I Ships do? It. The Bureau of Ships was in charge of all the ships that were mm -hmm. in the Navy, big ships. I worked for a, a naval captain, he was a captain, mm -hmm. and they had uh, condensers, that all the equipment that went on the ships, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the whole Bureau was in charge of all the ships Where they were used mm -hmm. in the war. Mm -hmm. hmm. It was, it was That's a big job life. there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of fun. Washington D.C. during World War II. I'm I sure that was a lot going on there. <laughs> it was a neat place to be then. <laughs> where were where you where were you were you in the Pentagon? I mean, the Pentagon was no. built right around there, wasn't it? Right around that yeah, time. Yeah, the but Pentagon was strictly Army. It was. Okay, the Navy so. had at that time they had a, they called them T buildings. They had a whole bunch of on Constitution Avenue. There mm -hmm. was a whole bunch of kind of like barracks, but they were office buildings. Mm -hmm. And that's where we, we always worked from that area. Mm -hmm. And Bob, where did your military travels take you in the Marines? Well, uh, <clears throat> one thing about the, the Navy, uh, in order to uh, become an officer, this is officer's training, this, mm -hmm. this, this program, you had to have a minimum of two years college. Mm -hmm. And so that was a crash program that they made and we ended up in Louisiana Tech uh, in uh, this program, but the Naval, the Navy, and Marine Corps both. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> so we got finished our two year, of course, it was a crash program. You got that two year college uh, fairly quick. Then, of course, in order to be a Naval or a Marine, you got to go through boot camp, you know. And uh, uh, <clears throat> so we had to go through Paris Island. Ooh. And from there, we, we, uh, we met that, and then we went to another <clears throat> series of training, and then if you got through that, then you go to officer's training in Quantico. And uh, so through all of that stuff, uh, I got my commission in August the 15th. And it was uh, just prior to that, they dropped a huge bomb over, oh. <laughs> over Japan. Yeah. And uh, it used to it used to irritate me to hear people cry about uh, dropping a big bomb in Japan, mm -hmm. and uh, it would have cost us a minimum of a ten million men to take Japan. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I'd trade uh, ten million Americans for one one Jap, mm -hmm. you know, and. Uh, but uh, and that and soon after that, of course, they everything pulled back, and all of a sudden, the war is over. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we, they fumbled around and and uh, didn't know what to do with us, you know. <laughs> and the, the the class right ahead of me, uh, they were on the boat going to China, 
and uh, we were getting ready to do all that, and they just pulled everything out. Mm -hmm. And uh, and about uh, a couple of months later, they just they gave us an opportunity if we wanted to reenlist, and we didn't see any reason to at that point, so we just got our discharge. Where were you when you heard about Hiroshima? Uh, I was in, in uh, Quantico, Virginia, we were getting the officer's training there. Was it one of those, I mean, a lot of people can, they know where they were standing when they heard about Pearl Harbor. Yeah, we were out in the field, <clears throat> and this colonel, uh, captain, uh, uh, pulled us all together there and, and uh, made the announcement. He says, now, we have no feel on how I'm, uh, what's going to happen from this point on. So everybody was alerted to it, but then, okay, you're going back to work, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, but we knew it was something really big, and in those days we had never heard of an atomic bomb, you know. Was it described as like a very powerful, just a very powerful? Yeah, bomb? Yeah, I believe they they gave a description of the hole in the ground and the stuff, how big it was and how deep and stuff. Mm -hmm. I never will forget that. And uh, but uh, thank goodness uh, our president decided to drop the bomb. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, do you know where you were when you heard about that? No, not really. Uh, I remember hearing it. I mean, hearing about it, and mm -hmm. it was the big thing. But I don't remember specifically mm -hmm. why I was. Mm -hmm. And I, I uh, like pretty much everyone I talked to who was around at that time, and mm -hmm. an adult. Do you agree with what Bob said about the trade-off uh, for? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's that's one hundred percent on that. Yeah, Anybody I've ever talked yeah. to? Yeah. I do remember yeah. very well uh, President Roosevelt died while I was mm -hmm. in Washington. I can remember the, oh the funeral, yeah. I mean the parade uh -huh. <coughs> being at that, that was, uh, yeah. I remember that very well. So did you get demilitarized and you got out of the service pretty well, quick after that? Uh, I didn't get out as soon as he did because I liked it so well and, mm -hmm. it, and there was a period there where the government had control of the coal mines in Kentucky, mm -hmm. Ashland, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And if we wanted to, we could go there and work further. So I did that for about a year I, in Ashland, Kentucky. They had offices set up, military, and mm -hmm. uh, office work. Mm -hmm. the, I don't know now what we did do, but it was all about the mines, different mines. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. around. The government had control of it. So when did you get out for it? Did you stay in for another year or so? Or? Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. I got out in uh, 1947, I think. So it did. Long. At yeah. this point, you two had not met. Nope. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now you got to tell me how that happens, Bob, from your point of view. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can always remember it was the first Monday in June. Of what year? Uh, 56. Oh, no, no, no. We were married in 51. Oh, 51. 51. <laughs> okay. And, uh, but, uh, it, I don't, it just stuck in my mind. And uh, we, we we met and, and we dated some then. How'd you meet? Well, uh, a friend of mine, uh, he, I was working at, in a supermarket at uh, Linwood and Troost. And uh, so he he came up and and uh, when I was going to get off, and I told him, he said, "Well, there's a, a couple of nice looking gals down there." <laughs> and I said, "Well, okay, I'll be down here." <laughs> and that's that's where we met. And uh, down where? Where'd you go down to? It's called Oscar's Lounge. Oscar's mm -hmm. Lounge. Mm -hmm. And it was at what what intersection do you remember? It, it, yeah, armor and, and, and truce. Mm -hmm. Armor and truce. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was a nice area in those days. Mm -hmm. Real nice. Very nice. Thing. And uh, it was obvious we liked each other quite well. And and uh, uh, you, want, you want me to go on through the whole story? No. <laughs> well, what did he say to you at Oscar's Lounge? Do you remember? Well, I, I don't remember it, but he, he, he liked me mm -hmm. and my friend. Yeah. <laughs> they liked mm -hmm. each other, I guess. Mm -hmm. And we talked, and then we did start dating. We dated about 
three months was all, and he had one, two brothers that lived in California then, and one of them was coming back that summer, which they did. They were married, mm -hmm. and he, he kept saying he was going to go back to California with his brother, and he did go back, and we'd only gone together about three months, but quite steadily, <laughs> and he went back with his brother, and then he got in touch with me, and we started communicating all every day, and six months, or three months after that, I mm -hmm. went out and we were married then. So we'd only known each other six months, mm -hmm. <laughs> and only three months actually being, you know, close. What's dating? I mean, what what was a date? What did you do for a date? Oh, we'd, we'd go to lounges a lot. Mm -hmm. We liked to dance. Mm -hmm. We'd dance mm -hmm. then. We'd go to a movie once in a while. That was about it. We didn't eat dinner out too much. Mm -hmm. um, that was just about it. Mm -hmm. Bob, did you have a car mm -hmm. back then? No way. <laughs> no way. Not yet, huh? No. And uh, in fact, uh, after I went to California, it was after we were married and I bought a, mm -hmm. I bought a car. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but... Uh, it wasn't a new car. <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. But you take uh, war years takes something away from you and, and uh, uh, things just happen differently and uh, uh, we were we knew we met it we met that uh, we liked each other and, and, uh, and it's, we were I think both of us at the, at the stage were married we were looking for marriage when you say the warriors changed you, what do you does that mean? You just want to explain that a little bit more. Well, <clears throat> it's a well, it's it's a danger period, and and uh, you know uh, where where you were headed eventually, and uh, uh, everybody's attitude was uh, in that in that frame of mind. Uh, like fatalistic he, here or today uh, or, and mm -hmm. gone tomorrow mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, and it's it was wait with with a lot of them uh, and so th that that carried off carried on and through oh I'd say maybe two three years after the war mm -hmm. and uh, your uh, your whole atmosphere is is war and uh, and so you were uh, have fun today because tomorrow you're gone, you know, mm -hmm, kind of. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we settled down, and uh, uh, been fortunate to uh, have this all these years together. What did you do for backing up a little bit? You got out of the military relatively quickly after after the war was over. Mm -hmm. What did you do for a living between when you got out of the military? And when you met Edie? Uh, <clears throat> well, uh, my brother and I, the one, uh, he, he was a pilot in the Air Force. He got out at the same time. And well, and my brother was in the Army. And when my, my older brother, all four of us got out pretty much at the same time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but my brother Lynn and I, uh, who, Mutual friend uh, was introduced to go to, to a chiropractic college, so we thought that was maybe the right thing to do. So we started in on that <clears throat> chiropractor college. Mm -hmm. And we grad <laughs> we graduated. <laughs> you and graduated from chiropractor college. Yeah. The <laughs> and uh, huh? I said it was the Cleveland. The Cleveland college. chiropractor still college. There. Cleveland college. Yeah. And uh, of course, that Uncle Sam was paying for that, you know. Oh, I guess yeah. Yeah, and uh, but uh, then about the time we got done with that, uh, here come the Korean War, mm -hmm. and uh, I I didn't stay in the reserves, but my brother that was a, a pilot in the Air Force, he stayed in the reserves, <laughs> so here comes a little letter in the mail. Mm -hmm says we'd like to have you back mm -hmm. and so our we had just gotten through the college and uh, so 
I didn't have the money to open up an office and all that stuff. We had some other plans, what we were going to do. But anyway, he uh, and he made a career out of it and come out as a, as a lieutenant colonel. Mm -hmm. and, so he ended uh, up being career military. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Never became a Yeah, he told me. He, no. Yeah. <laughs> he told me, he said, uh, if they called me back, he kind of missed it. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, a pilot in the Air Force, uh, they're pretty hot jockeys, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and he liked that. Mm -hmm. And uh, he went in, and made a career out of it, and retired. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so you were you were in chiropractor college, quite a while. Then Korea happened in what fifty one. Mm -hmm. Okay, which brings you about to when you bump into Edie at the at Oscar's Lounge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, were you living at home then? Still. Oh no, the no, home was still Bramer, but right now. Oh, that's right. You're up here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you worked. And you I worked, worked for Milgrams. Yeah. For you years. worked for Milgrams. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did uh, which is one of the questions I have here. Well, but, but let me ask Edie. What did you do between the end of the war and when you met Bob? I worked for about four years with Brinks, the Armored Car. Brinks. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Here in Kansas City. In Kansas City. What'd you do? Well, uh, one, one day a week I would count money, but most of the time I was in charge of the office. There were about three of us in the office, and we did the payroll and just the office. Where was the office located? Ninth and McGee. Mm -hmm. It was then. They have a mm -hmm. building of their own now. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. Well, um, Bob, we talked about you, know, you went to chiropractor college, and, what, and you ended up not being chiropractor. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What kind of jobs did you hold? I mean, after you got out of the military, you, a lot of people, some people go right into their career life work and they never change. Mm -hmm. Some people try this, that, and the other thing and then stumble acro across the right thing. Mm -hmm. What did you do? Well, <clears throat> I was, I was, of course, working with Milgrams prior to going out to California. And uh, out there, I, I uh, got employment in the office with the Judson Steel Corporation. And uh, then he and I got married, and I, I kept that job there until we decided to go back to Kansas City. A steel company? Judson Steel. They made the reinforcing rods, you know, and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Rebar and. Rebar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, uh, then I went, uh, I don't know how many jobs. <laughs> Uh, got interested in the food broker. Yeah, came but uh, back to City. Yeah, food, mm -hmm. you know, we're working for Milgrams and stuff. Uh, Milgrams is a grocery store? Yeah, supermarket. They, they were the, the biggie at that time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, then uh, I, I got a opportunity to, uh, to work for a food broker. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, now you look back on it, it was pretty small potatoes, but it gave me an opportunity to e experience that type of business mm -hmm. out in the sales. And <clears throat> I did that with them, and then I went with Kraft Foods and got experience there. And As a broker? Mm -hmm. No, no, I worked for Kraft Foods. For the corporation. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, then I went back with a brokerage deal again. Mm -hmm. I liked that. And... Uh, and uh, they moved us <clears throat> in 1960 to Springfield. Mm -hmm. And that was, we were there 10 years and it was 10 great years. I learned a lot. Mm -hmm. I get into the wholesale and retail and all kinds of stuff. <clears throat> then our companies had a merger and moved back and and uh, I got the, the rookery job of being sales manager. Mm -hmm. And uh, is nothing you can do. It's right, <laughs> but uh, you learn a lot too. Yeah. A and, learning uh, experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, then and that whole deal <clears throat> it, it evolved into uh, it was a food service division, and they they didn't have a industrial division, mm -hmm. and. Uh, of course, I didn't know what it was either at that time. But I saw one of the guys was uh, selling sugar. And uh, so I finally 
got enough information on it to know uh, that there was a pretty good business in this thing. And, uh, and then the head man called me in one day and <clears throat> he said, uh, what do you know about industrial sales? I said, I hadn't heard of it before. <laughs> <laughs> We talked a while, and uh, he said, "Let me." I told him, "I said, let me." Uh, I was sales manager at the time, and and uh, the best thing you want to do as sales manager is, is to advance into something else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's tough. <laughs> and um, so I, I did some investigation on that, and uh, and we had sugar to start with as a basis. And I told him, I said, I think we can do, I can do something on that thing, though. I'd like to try it. And I did, and I started doing quite well with that. <clears throat> and uh, the fact, it, it, it got quite large, and, and things happened to the company itself, kind of retail went here, and food service went here, and, and, uh, and that kind of stuff. And, and uh, so I was the only one that was working industrial. And make a, should I tell him the whole story? <laughs> make a long story short, uh, the two top guys, there was four of us that had stock into this thing, and I was number three. And uh, that uh, the guy that was under me, uh, we got talking one day, he said, Murray, I, I, I could tell you something that really chill you. <laughs> I said, what are you talking about? And uh, so he had, he'd gotten information uh, out of the company book somewhere. I don't know how he did it. And uh, he came out to my house and showed me these things, you know, that they were taking the top two guys were taking a lot of money out. And, and uh, uh, all that kind of stuff. And he's trying to want me to go in with him to something else, you know. So I thought about it a while, and I talked to Edie, and I said, what do you, I said, what do you want to do, honey? She said, well, what do you want to do? And I said, well, we can either do one or two things. I said, I can just sit there and act like I don't know what's going on, and and uh, <clears throat> we're probably about as far as we'll ever go. And, uh, or I can just, go on my own and, and, and uh, I know that industrial sales real well and <clears throat> they don't know anything about it mm -hmm. and <clears throat> which I did and Edie was a secretary and opened up our office and and uh, uh, the thing well the, the, the really miracle thing that happened I had two or three accounts small accounts that went with me on that and uh, I told Edie, I said, I've been thinking for all week about a uh, sugar company. And I know the salesman left this town and, and uh, went to the West Coast. And I don't know if anybody represents them now or not. And so I, I called, make a long story short on that deal too, and got a hold of the head man by accident. Mm -hmm. <laughs> told him who I was and what I was doing. He said, you know, he said, uh, this call sure is timely. I said, <laughs> I said, what do you mean? He said, well, we had a man in there working the trade, and he said he uh, went with another company and, and went to the West Coast. He said, I, we got a man in Minneapolis. I've been after him for a while to get something done down there. And I said, well, I can handle that for you. He said, <laughs> he laughed a little. He said, well, we'll have to look at that. And, uh, so he, he said, I'll tell you what, I'll call him in Minneapolis and, and tell him to get a hold of you right away. And the crazy thing, part of that thing was, when I told his secretary, this is Bob Murray, <clears throat> he answered the phone right away because one of his best friends in Ogden was Bob Murray. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, and uh, so he and I, just really busted herself, and it wasn't too long. Uh, we had enough growing and going. And uh, I told Rick, I said, "Well, it's crazy hard business, but if you want to join us, you're welcome." And that was the time that Rick joined the company, and he has really done a super job. Oh, and uh, 
but uh, it's it's just uh, you, you look back and a lot of things that you do and it happens and uh, it's just uh, by the grace of God nothing else and so uh, let me, let me I mean, you mentioned earlier about Milgram's and I uh, mm -hmm. grocery store and what's the story behind this picture <laughs> Well, that's that's a that's a clown there. That's in Springfield, probably. No, I know where it is. Oh, do you? It was that was in uh, Topeka. Um, Remember that? Mm -hmm. I came home, oh, all dressed up, and Rick was like this, and he just started crying and sc oh, scared him to death. death. <laughs> and we lived in Topeka. I yep, that yeah, was at Kraft Foods, mm -hmm. and uh, that was one of my little jobs. Is to put on a clown suit and promote craft products. Oh man! <laughs> I, mean, they, I haven't seen that in a long, long was that, time. Was that a job you would could have done without <laughs> putting on a clown suit? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, and and that's another thing we that can. I had I put on a with with a um, high class group one mm -hmm. in Topeka and uh, put on a craft deal and. Uh, it's where you put banners and all the windows and all the stores and build huge displays and and uh, uh, keep talking while they put a I got a yeah, plug in the camera. Keep and uh, but uh, that's when uh, well I guess that was the time when we decided to come back to Kansas City though. Wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we were just there. But, again. but that's in a. Went back with a food broker. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Different. Mm -hmm. Different one than yeah. Yeah. That brings back a lot of memories there. Uh, yeah. And uh, am I still supposed to be talking? Ah, uh, it's all right. You can hold on for a moment. Okay. I've got to find a. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that brings us up. Almost to where we are today, I guess. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you don't get away that easy. <laughs> um, okay. Um, all right. So Bob has described what he did professionally, and one thing I wanted to, to one thing as somebody thinking about this kind of stuff right now, the the mm -hmm. what thoughts go through your mind when he's talking about quitting his job. <laughs> and going and starting his own business, isn't that yeah. kind of risky? I mean, what? I mean, you got kids well, and. Well, true. I don't know. Well, we were younger, like you mm -hmm. were, you know, and and we uh, we came went to Chicago once. I remember met with one of the principal. We just felt confident that it was would be mm -hmm. all right. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. we'd go along, and Bob would tell me things when we were in the car, and I was writing stuff all the time and kind of making our money. We really, he said, well, if it didn't work, he knew he could get a job, mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and so we just, we just did it. Did you have money? Did you have money saved? <laughs> no. We borrowed, <laughs> borrowed five hundred. We borrowed five thousand. Five thousand. Yeah. But we paid that back in about two months. Mm -hmm. So we knew we knew we what we were going to do. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. had enough to live on with what we had mm -hmm. been mm -hmm. uh, working with, and so uh, no, we had no money. So did you? So after you got out of the military, backing up a little bit, what did what did you do for a living? I mean, and I know eventually ended up working for Murray Food Sales. But well, that's when I worked for Brinks. Oh, that's I right. I'm sorry. For Brinks yeah. before mm -hmm. that, and then I worked for the uh, when we were in California. The year I worked for the government. In California. The government office mm -hmm. in Berkeley. Um, what kind of, I mean, working in food sales, what kind of skills did you have to have to be good at that? Be able to talk. Talking, <laughs> communication. It's all sales mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, communication. <clears throat> and uh, you, you got to like it because it's, it's uh, well, any business you get into, you got to like it mm -hmm. if you're going to succeed. But when I got into the industrial sales, though, that's what I really like because mm -hmm. there's a lot of volume in it. <clears throat> a lot of people in the food business don't even know what you're talking about, mm -hmm. and that helps. Because <laughs> you're the expert. No one else <laughs> yeah, does anything. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, let me see. I'm just kind of tearing through some of my notes here. What? Um, uh, <laughs> I've got a couple of notes here from Rick too. Wanted to talk a little bit more about uh, getting married. You got married in California because mm -hmm. that was that window of time you were you were working for the government out there. And well, uh, he had gone out there with his brothers, mm -hmm. and uh, the, when we decided to get married, I went out mm -hmm. there, and we were married. We were married in San Francisco. His mm -hmm. brother lived in uh, Berkeley, and one lived in Hayward. They were just right close there. Uh, so you got married where in California? San Francisco. San Francisco. Mm -hmm. and we, not a fancy wedding. We were just married in the marriage chapel. Mm -hmm. Who was the best man and the maid of honor and all that? His brother John and his brother Kenny were our attendants mm -hmm. and their wives. And then I, I happened to have a, a girlfriend that lived out there and she was with us. And just that was mm -hmm. the only family we had there. And where'd you spend? I mean, what you, you so your wedding night was in San Francisco, uh -huh. mm -hmm. the Fairmont Hotel. The Fairmont, mm -hmm. I've been to. Fairmont. Um, we couldn't afford it, but that was our. <laughs> <laughs> did you have any? But did you go to dinner that evening with anybody, or just the two? They, of you? they were all with. They were all there. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we have mm -hmm. a picture of all of us together. Mm -hmm. um, now I got a note here from Rick saying. Um, the move to Springfield, Missouri, which you talked about, which you had to do professionally, um, and you know he, he's asked me to ask you a little bit about you know the houses you had um, in those nine years, that window of almost ten years, you had a house on Sunshine Street. Mm -hmm. you know, what, what was that house like? That was a rental house when we first went mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. and it is no longer even there. They mm -hmm. tore it down. Sunshine's a busy street in Springfield. Is it? And uh, but we liked the house yeah, at we the liked time. We had a big, nice family room and the bedrooms. And the the one on Pickwick. Did you own that one? We bought that one. Mm -hmm. And that's where we lived the rest of the time we were there. And it was a small house. We added to it and did did a lot of things to it, and it was a very livable home. Mm -hmm. And the school was right behind it. Mm -hmm. about Block. They could run yeah, that was the good. Field up yeah. to the school. And was that Delaware? Delaware, Delaware mm -hmm. School. That's, that's <coughs> we love Springfield, and, and I guess because the kids went to school there and they loved the school, we loved the school and the friends, the family, and then mm -hmm. our church was not too far from there either, the Westminster Presbyterian. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it was just a good life. We, we, we still go over there every the year. Mm hmm. And visit our friends from there. What about uh, talk, tell me a little bit about Boots and McTavish? The, they're apparently oh, the <laughs> dogs. What kind of dogs? Was, what kind of dog was Boots? Boots was a little wiener dog, I guess. Wiener and something else. Yeah, dogs mm -hmm. and dogs and yeah. great little dog. Low to the ground kind of dog. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah it's great, great dog. Mm -hmm. Where did we get her? We got her when we lived on Pickwick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, now, but she was a good dog. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. and good we always kids. consider her kind of Rick's dog. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh -huh. and then uh, McTavish we got when we left Springfield for Cheryl. That was for Cheryl her birthday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Scotty, like Scotty. We even pay, paid seventy five dollars for that dog. Yeah, yeah we <laughs> well, he paid money for it. Oh yeah, <laughs> and that was just a couple of days before we left and came back, mm -hmm. and uh, she was just a puppy. Um, and we had her then for 16 years, mm -hmm. didn't we? And we had boots about that long, too. Yeah. And you moved to Garnett Drive in Shawnee, uh -huh. which I think Rick has driven me past there before. So yeah. mm -hmm. when, when did you, you went there in like 1969, 1970. Yeah, Rick is about 16 years old or so. Mm -hmm. he, was a, he was a sophomore in mm -hmm. school. Mm -hmm. Hard time to make a move, really, we thought. Mm -hmm. They did but, well, though. Yeah, he did mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. and, uh, um, I'm just kind of looking through some of Rick's notes here. Bob, you were a Boy Scout leader? You were involved with Boy Scouts? Yeah, <clears throat> and Rick was in the troop, uh, and he got an eagle through that whole program. So he behaved? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was all but we had, <clears throat> we had camp outs uh, every month, mm -hmm. uh, except 
December and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, we had a good troop. We had, uh, I think, about 18 boys. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, Rick got, he advanced on through that and got his Eagle Scout. And, well, we got a picture downstairs. Uh, there was uh, seven, wasn't there? Eagle Scouts. <clears throat> we had seven of our troop and got an Eagle Scout at the same Corps of Honor. Mm -hmm. And that was in the newspaper in Springfield, and and uh, that was something I'm very proud of. <clears throat> There's a lot of work involved in getting oh, to boy. that point. They have to earn mm -hmm. all these merit badges, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. I remember the canoe deal. You have to yeah, all, all kinds of stuff. Uh, yeah, of, you know, all projects. kinds of badges. Yeah. And one of his service projects, and I remember this real well. We lived not too far from the church. But he had to, it was a God and Country Award, I think was what he was working on. Mm -hmm. The Christmas lights they had on the trees outside had to be turned off at night. So he'd get his pajamas on and everything because you didn't want to turn them off too early. And Bob would take him around in the car and that was his project. He had to turn <laughs> all those Christmas lights off every night. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, what a, they got a note here about British you uh, you're, you're you're a golfer, you you enjoy golf. Uh, you use that term kind of loosely. <laughs> <laughs> you have dabbled in golf. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do like that game. Yeah. Um, do you? Uh, uh, you went to Scotland once. Yeah, and Rick is the one that <coughs> set set this all up. In fact, there's been some other things since then too. Mm -hmm. But uh, <coughs> yeah, he he. He set a whole program, and Eddie and I, and 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 our daughter Cheryl, and Rick and his Cheryl. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's a great trip, and of course we had to go see the British Open, you know. Of course. And mm -hmm. uh, that was a th thrill of a lifetime because <clears throat> we seen a lot of stuff, and and uh, and this particular one of the St. St. Andrews, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> so. Uh, we were going around with Tom Watson and different ones. Rick was looking at his watch and he said, Dad, he said, <clears throat> you know, Jack Nicholas and Arnold Palmer are going to be teeing off at such such a time. And, and in Scotland, when you say tea time is 8.08, you stand there at 808, and 8.08 and announce your name and you hit the ball. Really? Yeah, it, it no, no 810 or 830. Wow. And uh, so we got in the grandstands and <clears throat> they introduced uh, Arnold Palmer and and, uh, and called his name and he got up and he teed off. Next was Jack Nicholas. And uh, so he did, they, when they, after they teed off, then they came past the grandstand here. Yeah. And Rick and I were right in that grass then, and <clears throat> and Arnold particularly, that was his his time, and uh, he come by the grandstands and he took his hat off and that old white hair flying, mm -hmm. so Rick and I was sitting there, boy, wow. and uh, that was a really really a thrill, and uh, and we we've, we've gone to Augusta one time too. Rick worked that out trip, for us, yeah, yeah. so. Uh, yeah, that's been our big time on mm -hmm. <laughs> on golf. What about you mentioned Arnold Palmer and those guys, uh, mm -hmm. some of the famous people. You have, Edie, you have any brushes with famous people that, in your life? You know, people of some notoriety. I can't recall a fan. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure there have been back in Washington. Mm -hmm. uh, but you caught me off guard. No, that's all right. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask him next. See if he's <laughs> yeah. he's had any uh, brushes with the near with the, the famous. Or infamous. Uh, Bob, anybody come to mind? Well, uh, golfers. Hmm. That's about it. Your golfers. <laughs> oh yeah, for golfing, golfing. I was. Yeah, you can't get much higher than that. No, no, that's know. that's the royalty. Yeah. But uh, uh, Dave Winfield. Did you have a? Did you? Have a, yeah, that was the strangest thing. What happened? <laughs> yeah, were you with me on that deal? I think I was with you, but not with you. Actually. Yeah, but anyway, we, we had a oh, I was having a luncheon down, and Dave was going to be the guest of honor, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> uh, 
uh, anyway, I was. Uh, I, You're waiting, weren't you? To yeah, in? yeah, I was waiting to go in. But anyway, I, I saw him coming, you know. <laughs> I kind of walked over that way, and and uh, he kind of grinned at me, you know, and, and shook my hand, <laughs> and he wanted to know where this place was, and I said, well, are you going right? It's right over in that area there. And uh, so that was, I didn't even know that uh, uh, he was coming all by himself and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. He just walked in, you know. But he he was a, he, he was a gentleman. He, he's a real fine guy. Big guy, isn't he? Big guy, oh yeah, big guy. Yeah, you know, he's about ricochet the size. And he thought you were, did he think you were somebody else? Or, I mean, what do you yeah, think? Yeah, I think so. He did, you know, <laughs> so I didn't disappoint him in it, <laughs> but uh, I, I didn't show him where it was, you know, but uh, he he just walked across there all by himself, Wow! and he must just flew in and, 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 and uh, come on out, and, and but uh, yeah, he's he's quite a guy. Edie, did you, uh, Rick uh, wanted me to, to jar your memory on just seeing Joseph Cotton. Oh, mm -hmm. yes, that oh, was a thrill. That was mm -hmm. in California um, Palm Springs. years ago. Yeah, Palm Springs. Mm -hmm. and, and his sister, who lived in California, and her husband had met us there. And we went to Denny's for a breakfast. This has probably been, what, 10 or 15 years ago? Oh, at least, yeah. <clears throat> and we went to breakfast at a Denny's, mm -hmm. not too far from where we were. And <laughs> we saw Joseph Cotton. And we just about had a fit. He <laughs> went in, <laughs> and he shook our hands yeah. and everything. That was a thrill because he—I yeah. used, used to like him very much mm -hmm. in the movie. Mm -hmm. well, that was a thrill. He I was about boy. That. He was had some age on him at that time too, yeah, didn't he? he did. And uh, he was at Denny's. Mm -hmm. Denny's. Denny's. Was did anyone else recognize him? Or just you. Oh, I'm sure people would have. Maybe yeah. they were used to it. We yeah, I guess so. Uh, with Palm Springs, <laughs> yeah, you know, probably but a he, lot of famous. He people. had a, 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 I would, a nurse. Uh, I'm sure that's what it was. A nurse with him. Yeah. And because uh, he was showing his age quite a little bit. Mm -hmm. He must be 15 and, uh, years ago. I would imagine he was 80 or something mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. that. Probably. Yeah, great guy. Very nice. But speaking of movies, uh, I wanted to ask you about television. I mean, when was the first? When did Bob? When did you have a television? For when did you first hear about TV and see TV? Well, uh, in Kansas City, and uh, what was he? What was the guy that uh, worked for WDAF? Uh, Randall Jesse. Randall Jesse, mm -hmm. and and you turn the TV on, it'd be either Randall Jesse and or nothing else. That's <laughs> all. <laughs> He'd have the news, you know, that yeah. big time stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember seeing that for the first time, and and it was, you know, there wasn't a clear picture like you see today, mm -hmm. but uh, Randall Jesse was talking on television, and. Uh, would 1957 be about right? Mm, no, like DAF it? went on in 1948. Did they? Yeah. And they were the first station, the only station allowed for a few years mm -hmm. until they figured out who was going to get what frequencies. And then mm -hmm. Channel 5 came on and Channel 9. Um, I so don't recall when we had our first one of our own. It wasn't a very good one, I know. Was it expensive? I don't even remember that. No, I, I, even. Well, you know, I bought, I bought it at Jones store. Oh, I, I worked for them one? one time. You worked for them for a while? Yeah. Part time. No, it's full time. Remember? And uh, I left long. Milgram and went with them, then mm -hmm. I went with uh, mm -hmm. the uh, broker deal. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah. I don't remember, though, what they cost or anything. Do well, we in comparison, like today, <clears throat> you make more money, so you pay more, yeah. and and it just dwindles down about equal. <laughs> you know, you're making so much, and you can. Mm -hmm. uh, TVs cost so much then. What uh, Edie? Do you remember what shows you would watch back way back when in the '50s on television? What was like shows you guys did not miss? Uh, well, of course, Jack Benny was on TV. Yeah. Um, Deborah McGee was on TV. Yeah. Milton Burrow. Milton Burrow. Milton Burrow. Yeah, he was. Yeah, the. Um, mm -hmm. There was. Sid Caesar. Sid Caesar. Oh boy. Yeah. yeah. Sid mm -hmm. Caesar. 
Mm. I'm trying to think of any other. Oh, we used to love the Hit Parade. Mm -hmm. The Hit Parade. Mm -hmm. That was a big show. We wouldn't have missed that. All the popular songs were done. Oh, then. yeah. We mm -hmm. loved that Hit Parade. Did they have particular singers do the songs? Uh, they had the same ones every Same week. ones. Yeah. yeah, I can't remember their names. but uh, Yeah, I can't remember the guy and a gal. Really. They, they're, they're not people that, you know, like famous Yeah, singers. they weren't, yeah. Yeah. I can't they remember. Good. Arthur Godfrey had a show. Arthur Godfrey. Oh, yeah. Watched him a lot. Mm -hmm. Got used to soap operas. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's would have been about the time. <laughs> yeah. But Arthur Godfrey, we watched, or I did, because he was working. Do you remember when, uh, watching the news? I mean, the, the networks had 15-minute newscasts for years and years, and then they expanded them, and mm -hmm. I guess it would have been John Cameron Swayze. And well, yes, I yeah, remember so, so, seeing yeah. him. But I don't remember. Maybe we weren't as interested in news yeah. at that time. Douglas I don't know. Edwards but, uh, before uh, Walter Cronkite. Yes, I re we remember seeing all of those people mm -hmm. in the news. Um, also, that's when Captain Kangaroo was popular. Mm -hmm. I watched Captain Kangaroo. Yeah. And what did the, tell me about tell me about the kids a little bit? You got Rick and and his sister Cheryl. Cheryl. Mm -hmm. And who's older? Rick's the oldest. Rick's the oldest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he is mm -hmm. getting up there, but um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, mm -hmm. Cheryl is. They were both born in Kansas City, right? In St. Mary's Hospital. Both of them were born in Kansas City. And how much younger is Cheryl? Cheryl is about three and, three and a half years younger than Rick. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they uh, went to the same schools, pretty much, or they did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They went to, uh, both of them went to Delaware School. Springfield. And uh, mm -hmm. Cheryl was in the sixth grade when we, we moved back here. Mm -hmm. And Rick went the whole six years there. Did they get along as kids? I mean, are they yeah, fighting they it or? Uh, really? I suppose they maybe had disagreements. No, nothing that st no, stands nothing. out. Mm -hmm. No, they were good. So by and large, they got along. Yeah, yeah. they got along mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Had, a, had a good. Yeah, they really did. Together, yeah. They liked their dogs. Mm -hmm. Cheryl liked Boots too. And uh, but Tavish was her dog. And uh, yeah, they they did fine. Mm -hmm. And they both liked the school and all their activities. She was a bluebird and uh, not brownie, but a bluebird. And uh, mm -hmm. what do you call them? Not Girl Scouts. What's the other one? Oh, brownies. Brownies. No brownies. No, but no Girl no, Scouts. Yeah. Um, bluebirds. So what's the other one? Not oh, Girl I, you know, Scouts. I kind of know. I just can't remember. Well, that's what she was in, and I I was in active in that quite a bit. With, uh, mm -hmm. not being in the um, let me ask you this: when you when you were when well, we're talking about television, do you remember when you first saw Elvis Presley, and what you thought? Oh. I don't really remember when we first saw him, but we certainly remember him. Yeah, we liked Elvis. We liked all his specials. Initially. And our Cheryl was crazy about Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> he was her. <laughs> we, we we were a little astonished at the gyrations. Yeah, and, uh, it's all the show. Know, yeah, yeah and, and today, you know, it's, it's, it's simple. <laughs> yeah. And, you can see, that we remember the first time when the Beatles came over was on Ed Sullivan's mm -hmm. show. Mm -hmm. We remember that program very well, mm -hmm. don't we? Yeah. Kids watch that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what did you think of the Beatles at that time? Well, we thought they were all right. Mm -hmm. we? Yeah. Their, their music was pretty good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not like some of the crazy stuff now. Now, how did how did Rick get hooked on Jerry Lee Lewis? By the way. <laughs> well, I don't know really. He just liked. He just liked that music, I guess. We've and always liked <laughs> country music, good country music. Bob and I mm -hmm. have. And uh, any particular songs come to mind that you particularly like country music? Uh, Favorites. There are. But what are they now? Yeah, well, George Jones had some, and then of course he uh, stopped loving her today. That yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Boy, I just can't offhand mm -hmm. think. Of course, uh, the coal miner's daughter, she, we liked her. Yeah, mm -hmm. and Patsy Cline, those, mm -hmm. those songs. Um, we just like pretty songs. There's a lot of famous ones. We heard one the other night, <laughs> and I can't even think of it now. George Jones, of course, you know. Is, is, 
they don't sing them today like they did then. Mm -hmm. They're just. What, what, what was the guy that they you, don't make any sense now that they don't have a, a rhythm yeah they're or just, a story yeah or, they're just uh, kind of wild and crazy did your did your taste in music change over the years or I mean what did you I mean when you're in, when you're in the military <coughs> when you were in the military what are you listening to oh beautiful music mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know like Tommy Dorsey Dorsey Jimmy Dorsey yeah. mm -hmm. In fact, Sinatra, uh, yeah. Tony Bennett, even then. I can remember one time, <clears throat> my older brother got a, had a radio and he he brought it home, <clears throat> and uh, he got it all tuned in there, and 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 Tommy Dorsey was on it, not yeah, Tommy Dorsey, and uh, the trombone, you know, mm -hmm. and is that what he had trombone? Yeah. And uh, we just couldn't believe. That music, it was super, and that was it. They had really good music, didn't mm -hmm. they? And, uh, and as far as music, though, I'd like to mention that when I was in high school, and my older sister Wilma was in high school, we harmonized pretty well together when we would sing. And one of the pretty dismal songs it would be now, "You Are My Sunshine," and that sort of thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. And there was a a talent show in Pittsburgh, Kansas, which was probably not that far, mm -hmm. but we had no way to get there. And we had an opportunity to go on that, but there was no way we could get there. So we <laughs> couldn't <laughs> ride your we horse used to over or anything. Her up there. It's nice to get the invitation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She's no longer with us. Yeah. We used to love to sing together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I used to sing quite a bit when I was younger. Are you still sing good. Yeah, but I, in fact, I even entered in uh, solos in in school in the contests. And you need to take a break or anything. No. Okay. <laughs> Let me uh, pick up where I was. I'm kind of looking at since, as this usually works, we cover things that that are listed here just in the course of discussion. So. Mm -hmm. um, Bob, did you ever get injured bad? I mean, how did it happen? It seemed like I got hit in the head when I was young. But <laughs> 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 well, not that I know. He's been lucky. Yep. What about you, Edie? Oh, you think, guys are so lucky. I don't think yeah. I was ever mm -hmm. really injured mm -hmm. anyway. Um, bad. Been bruised a little. But <laughs> <laughs> Um, did your parents, let's talk about your parents first, did they have any like, like, like wisdom they would pa try and pass along to you, like sayings or, you know, like uh, the kind of things that, oh, moms always say that kind of stuff. Either one of you? Mm -hmm. Well, I had never already <clears throat> thought about that, but... Uh, can't think of anything specific, really. Uh, they just kind of set good mm -hmm. examples of hard work mm -hmm. and uh, hang in there. Mm -hmm. And there were so, so many of us, I guess we just kind of, mm -hmm. we just kind of knew what we were supposed to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. I guess yeah. with that many kids, you get to be pretty self-reliant. Yeah. yeah. You know? And you don't mind. They were you know, it, people, it just, though. it's just, you you grow into that kind of stuff, and, and, and that's, that's and what you do. They teach you what you need to know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, we had good schools. And, and, uh, okay, let me, I'm going through some historical events here. Um, what did, what did uh, do you remember what you, uh, you thought about the uh, United States involvement in Korea at the time? Do you know? Did the country or you have any opinion about that one way or another? Yeah, <clears throat> uh, of course it was a communist state, mm -hmm. and uh, at, at that particular time, and even today, as far as that's concerned, uh, it it is evil, mm -hmm. and uh, our country was trying to uh, keep it from even getting 
more ingrained in, into the world, you know, and, and, and which is a process that eventually taken over. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had a brother that had to go there. <clears throat> yeah, he, uh, which that, that would make number five, wouldn't it? Was it Air Force? Is that the Air Force? No, he he was well. He yeah, he was too. But uh, my younger brother uh, had to go to Korea, and uh, in the army. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, that was a tough, tough deal. There was some bitter winters in there, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, but he came home okay. Mm -hmm. And my brother, that's a year older than I am, who was in the Air Force, that's the period where he had stayed in the reserves, and they sent him a little letter said, we'd like to have you back. And he was a pilot. Mm -hmm. he, he but, fly, he, but he loved it. He loved it, though. Oh, I, mean, I heard it gets in your blood. What did he fly, oh, do you know? Well, uh, in World War II there, it, there was those night fighters, mm -hmm. and uh, they're pretty hot, I like P-38s kind of thing. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, then when he went back in, <laughs> all the guys that called back in, it was all prop stuff. They had to retrain them for jets, mm -hmm. and so that's a whole new ball game. Mm -hmm. So he was retrained in jets, and uh, they, they, the whole art of flying is changed. Mm -hmm. And uh, you come in hot, and, and you go out hot, mm -hmm. in order to, because of the whole status of it. But he uh, he told me when he had called him back, he said, <clears throat> he said, I'm just going to stay in. And he did. He came out of Lieutenant Colonel and retired. That's a good deal if you can get mm -hmm. through that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did, did, you, did you, sec, I mean, anything about Korea sticking no. your mind? No. I'm just, not political, and it, it, it just kind of skimmed it just money, was, I guess. Yeah. It was just there, yeah. And I... Uh, <clears throat> Nuclear arms race. I mean, I don't know what you, what else you can say about that in the fifties, other than it happened. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, it's a, it's a same old ball game. Of course, if uh, your your so-called enemy uh, decides to travel that route, well, you, uh, you you can't let him take the whole ball of wax. Peace through strength. Yep. You know. mm -hmm. Just walk softly and carry a big stick. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, one thing I was going to say about when we were younger, when we were growing up, was one thing that we looked forward to an awful lot, you know, talk about what we did, especially when we lived in the country. We Every Sunday we would make homemade ice cream. <laughs> that was just this mm -hmm. annual or a weekly thing we mm -hmm. did. A big two-gallon freezer that you cranked, mm -hmm. sometimes with neighbors and mm -hmm. sometimes just us. And my mother was such a nice cream eater, and of course you didn't have freezers like now to put the leftover if there was any left. She'd get mm -hmm. up in the middle of the night if there was any left and go outside and, <laughs> and eat ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> you can put your arm on top of that wire, you know, just don't worry about it. Just, you know, put oh, your arm over it. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know where it was. Yeah. There it is. That, you know, you, you really, back in, in, in our times, Sunday was a time to make ice cream, mm -hmm. and uh, you'd have your course, relatives uh, come sometimes. Mm -hmm. I had this one uncle; he later lived in California, but they were always kind of partial to me out of all of us. I don't know why, but they used to live in Iola, Kansas, and my uncle used to like uh, beans. And w once they came to our house, and my mother had cooked navy beans. And he, he used to joke with me, you remember, remember even when we were out there, mm -hmm. I guess I was amazed at the amount of beans he, he put on his plate, and I said something about, oh, look at Uncle Dick, <laughs> plate of beans, and that always stayed with me, with, with him. Yeah. <laughs> People remember relatives for strange, yeah. You know, yeah. yeah, for strange reasons. Do, do you remember uh, the Kennedy assassination? Do you know where you were when you heard about that? Yeah, I was in Mount Vernon, Missouri, mm -hmm. and uh, I heard that, <clears throat> couldn't believe it, and uh, so it it really upset me, and uh, uh, so I just got in the car and drove on home, mm -hmm. and uh, it was on the radio in the car all the way, and. Uh, 
But that was really a tragic thing. Edie, were you with him? Yeah, no. I, well, I do remember we were in Springfield, and uh, I remember I went across the street to a close neighbor of mine, because mm -hmm. everything was closed for several days, schools, and mm -hmm. it was, it was a, hard, a bad time. Yeah. But I remember it. Do you, uh, let's see, let's talk about some of these presidents. What do you think about Truman? Truman was, He's one of my favorites. Uh, <clears throat> you always knew where you were with Truman. He was up front. Mm -hmm. And uh, he didn't miss too many words. Yeah. <laughs> but he's a Missouri guy, you know. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, uh, he uh, actually, when Roosevelt died, and uh, he had to take over the reins, and he... Uh, he wasn't a skilled politician. He's a pretty new politician, really, yeah. at least in Washington. Yeah. But uh, he had the guts and the, and the, uh, to hang in there and, and make it work. And uh, uh, then it, it just uh, was, a, it was a tough time. Uh, and I, I can remember when Roosevelt died, they, they called us and all out and and, uh, and, and in assembly and and uh, gave us the word our president had died. Mm -hmm. And uh, which here's somebody who'd done three terms and it was yeah mm -hmm. been around a long time as president. Yeah. A lot of people for their whole adult lives. Mm -hmm. But I, Truman was was honest and a hard worker and and. Uh, uh, I think all in all, he did a good job. Mm -hmm. He wasn't uh, suave, and you know, or, uh, he didn't mess around with his daughter, any. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was later. Was yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you, What do you think about um, Johnson? Uh, Johnson was a he was a politician, and uh, uh, and a Texan. Uh, they're they're a little bit different ap apples than we are, mm -hmm. but but I I think he was honest. I think uh, that uh, uh, he did he did improve on the racial relations mm -hmm. program, and uh, he had <clears throat> he had a good wife, and uh, uh, unfortunate that he had that. Uh, war at that time. Vietnam. Yep. Which and, pretty much uh, drove him out of office. Yep, sure it did. It hurt him. It gave him, it made him uh, hurt his heart and he died. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, he he went through some strenuous things. He was with Kennedy when he got shot, you yep. know. Yep, yep. And uh, <clears throat> that had to be a tremendous strain. Uh, and uh, but he was he was strong enough to handle it. Do you have any thoughts on Johnson, Edie? No. Yeah, my my mother used to call him. Oh, mush mouth is on TV. <laughs> yeah. So I remember that. Yeah. That's all I remember about him. Um, yeah. It was kind of mush mouth. <laughs> <laughs> um, Bob, do you have any any hobbies? I mean, what'd you do when you weren't working? I mean, obviously you did the Boy Scouts. Yeah. Oh, I like. Uh, I'm a professional at it, but I, I like to piddle around with woodworking some, mm -hmm. and uh, of course golf, and gardening. I like gardening, <clears throat> and uh, and golf. I'm really good at golf. <laughs> if I do say so myself. <laughs> but uh, when are you going to teach Rick? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> uh, Edie, what do you what do you do when you're not? Uh, oh, I like a hobby. To, I, I, I've always liked handwork. I mm -hmm. knit, like crochet, mm -hmm. uh, handwork. I've mm -hmm. always done that. Used to sew a lot. Mm -hmm. Just those kind of things. Is that does the piano represent yeah. handwork? <laughs> used to. Yeah. Yeah. I used to play the piano quite a bit by ear. I, I finally I know the notes, but I always play by ear. That's and a skill. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a skill. <laughs> Um, she playing, I'd sing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I heard you sing. Um, 
Yeah. What you talked earlier about your first car? I mean, you, with a used car, it sounded like. What, what kind of what, what kind of machine was that? Well, it was a Ford. I don't know how old it was. Model A. Model A Ford. But it, it was a good car as far as we were concerned, you know. What but was this? I gave you a little history on that car, though. I mean, one. yeah. Two probably. And when we moved back from California in that car, uh, we got uh, way out in the desert area, <coughs> and uh, he quit. <laughs> and I'd had it tuned up prior to uh, taking off, and the. Uh, uh, no, they don't even have them anymore. Uh, carburetor and uh, and a lid on that. They hadn't put the bolt down right on it. The air cleaner thing. Or? Yeah, it. it uh, I'm not really <laughs> sure now, but but anyway, uh, it just when you loosen that up, then the air gets in it. It 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 dies. Yeah. And uh, so. And you're I looked it over a little bit. I didn't know what the heck was wrong with it, you know. It just quit. And so in the meantime, the car had stopped. And uh, <clears throat> so I told him, I said, "When's how far is the next uh, uh, town? And he told me, and he's way out there in the middle of nowhere. I said, well, if you could send somebody back, because i got to get this thing fixed and get going. And... Uh, in the meantime, I, I, I was kind of playing around with this thing, and I saw this nut laying over here. I kept fooling around. I put the th I finally got the thing together. See, I told Edith, "Oh, see something? <laughs> Turn the key, and damn thing started." Yeah. <laughs> Mechanical genius. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so then I said, "Well, we just uh, we thought we better just wait here because uh, they're going to send us." Other. And then the guy did come out. And I told him the situation, and he said, okay. We went back to his garage, though, and, and uh, had him work on it a little bit, make sure it's right. Make sure it doesn't happen again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you had a Model you had a model A Ford. It was a Model A. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a Model T. In the early, in the early 50s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then what? Oh, then we went to... Uh, Company cars. No, we bought this one before we went with Kraft. Oh, yeah. Uh, it was Chevrolet, and, and, and nice car, mm -hmm. and uh, it wasn't new either. <laughs> no, but, but it wasn't very old. But I, I didn't have it too long, <clears throat> and I went to work for Kraft, and they furnished cars. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I said, "Well, you know, <laughs> bye bye." <laughs> and no uh, need to have this anymore. Yeah. Um, well, let me see. Do you remember, Edie? Do you remember your first airplane trip? <laughs> I do remember my first year. I, I'm not the world's worst or the best flyer. Mm -hmm. I've never had any problem, but I never looked forward to it. Bob had won a trip to... Uh, Florida. Florida, but what was the name of that place? An island. Marco. Marco, Marco Island. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I... He, he, plus my sisters who were over <laughs> at my folks' house on a Sunday, my sisters were there, and he was telling them that he'd won this trip, but he didn't know if he'd get any to go. So they talked me into it, and that was <laughs> my first trip. My doctor gave me some Valium to take. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I did fine. In fact, Bob said it was the, we had oh. to change three times, a little jumper from Miami to Marco Island and someplace else. So we went to New and Orleans and then on down the to... Roughest <laughs> Coming back, said it was the roughest trip he'd ever been on. It was rough. <laughs> was it? We're talking a jet or a propeller plane or what? Yeah. No, it's no, it's a regular a uh, airline. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the, I hear them talking. You know, they said one, one guy said, "Well, we could we could go up above." Oh, he come on the PA. He said we could go uh, up above the yes, but he had, uh, had some problem with that. But he said <clears throat> we can make better time if we can stay lower. So we think we'll go the lower route. It may be a little bumpy. And that dang thing yeah, just bounced. Please. I've never <laughs> been, been a lot of play, but nothing right. like that. That was your first one, that too. That was my first oh, one. Yeah, to yeah. I told Eddie we got home. I said, <laughs> that's about as bad as they'll ever get. Not always like that. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, one word. This is a hard question. What One word to describe Rick. Loyal. Super. One word to describe Cheryl. Cheryl. Oh, 
she's exceptional. Mm -hmm. um, that girl would do anything for you. Did you want to comment on Rick too? I'm sorry if I interrupted you. Well, Rick would be the same thing. Uh, he's just outstanding. I guess. They're both very family oriented. And considerate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's hard to put just one more. They'll do things for us that we didn't expect or didn't, uh, didn't even think about. Yeah. And uh, um, they're always doing something for us. Mm -hmm. Let me, uh, he wanted to make sure that I handed you some pictures to comment on. <laughs> All right. What does that bring to mind? Oh. What well, is that? that's our wedding night. Yeah, our wedding night. Boy, we're good looking, the aren't we? Fairmont Hotel <laughs> in yeah. San Francisco. Who's that girl I'm with? <laughs> <laughs> she is a beauty. Oh, well, that is nice. That was our mm -hmm. wedding <laughs> night. How old are you in that picture? Oh, uh, twenty-six. 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 Mm -hmm. And you, you're mm -hmm. you're the older woman. Well, I'm a little. Older. Yeah, I'm the older woman. I'm a little. That's an idiot. I say I'm twenty-six. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very close. Okay. <laughs> that one. Oh my, that's, that's Springfield. Springfield. Yeah, that's Springfield. We first we moved there in 1960, mm -hmm. and they probably about five or six, and Cheryl's mm -hmm. about uh, two and a half. Probably. Two and a half. And I cut her hair. Yep. Oh, her pixie haircut. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever cut her hair again? Ever <laughs> did she like it? I don't think so. Just when she was small. <laughs> oh, yeah. She outgrew that eventually. Yeah. yeah. You're not doing it anymore. No, no, no. Okay. I wouldn't know what to do now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this one. Um, oh. Oh, that's my family. Was that your anniversary? Well, no, no, that one. Oh no. My mom and dad, and my, all my sisters, and my two brothers. Yeah, you weren't lucky enough to find me yet, had you? No. I wasn't we, in the... Well, I don't I know. See, we, that, we could have been married then. That was probably when we were married. You, That's just our family. Oh, okay. The uh, Dryden family. Yeah, I'm in Elma. Yes, that, that's the house my folks lived oh, in. Oh, yeah, that's, that's all your kids, mm -hmm. Mom and Dad. Well, yeah, we were married that. They didn't yeah, there, in Oskaloosa. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good picture. Your mom and dad's there, and everybody. Get together very often. <clears throat> All right, now who are these people? Now that's you. I damn I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's my mother on the left front, and my sister on the on the front on the right, and uh, and her son Ron, and my dad's right behind my sister, and I'm there, and that's Big Rick. And that's their home in Bremer, Missouri, and they always yeah. had red rambling roses yeah. and on that porch. They're so pretty. Hmm. And Rick's a child in there? Yeah. And Rick was, Rick what, was a one year old probably there. Huh? Well, it looks like he's mm -hmm. got one probably. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's been a while. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right, now, who are these people? Oh, <laughs> that's in know. California. <laughs> In the backyard in Berkeley, California, where John and Elner lived. It sure is, isn't mm -hmm. it? That's probably after we've been married about a year. Mm -hmm. Well, you're a little old thing, yeah. aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I was little then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's about 1952, probably. 52? Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I've got some pictures here, like four to a page. Oh, he's drilling us here, Rick. <clears throat> <laughs> um, okay, let's... Uh, Let's see, just, you know, clockwise. Let's just talk about these individual okay. pictures. Well, start up here at the left. <clears throat> That's, uh, I bought that car at Chevrolet, remember? We lived on Central. Uh, on Central. Yeah. 3227 Central. And there Rick was. And this, this is all Central. Yeah. Yeah, there's a chair back there, remember? We, mm -hmm. we bought her that chair to... Yeah, where Rock Rick is. Rick was about and that's three our, weeks old there. My dad and mom down here. Mm -hmm. And then this is, oh yeah, this one here. We were still in the, in the, in the. Uh, that's your family, Berta, yeah. and your dad. Yeah, my brother Gene back there, and, and dad, and, and my sister. And Lynn and I were still in the uniform. Mm -hmm. There's my brother mm -hmm. John. Mm hmm. Hmm. Any more pictures on there? No, that's it. That's all. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Now, 
I want uh, I want you to talk about the woman here, and you can get you can talk about that guy. <laughs> well, that was a movie star that I met, and uh, and <laughs> and she really liked me. <laughs> Boy, I tell you what, and and uh, this this was in nineteen. No, that. you don't talk about that. Yeah, that's her. Oh, uh, she gets oh, it okay. <laughs> but she really, uh, she, I, I met her. She looked just like that. And I didn't see her in a Navy uniform, but <laughs> she's always been a pretty girl. <laughs> and uh, got a pretty smile. Gee, I believe you're a cute I don't girl. know what year that was. Oh, well, it was 43. 43. He had a line. He had a line. A meeting girls. He was like. a flirty. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, you see one as pretty as that, you yeah. know. And <laughs> turn yeah. Yeah. But, uh, I guess we were mutually attracted to one another. The one we met. You're not going to share the line. No, he he just was flirty. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So you don't have specific flirty. Line no. no. I just turned 18 there. <laughs> yeah. Mm. That one? No. An old veteran, but then. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I <laughs> There's two more pictures. <laughs> okay, now, what's the story behind <laughs> this picture? Oh, <laughs> you can go on that one. Well, that's the one we just had. Yeah. The 50th mm -hmm. anniversary. Mm -hmm. Where is that? That's in the Community Covenant Church. Yeah. At, uh, about 72nd and... Uh, Rivera. Yeah, our kids and, yeah, and uh, they gave us that wonderful party, and Carol was there. Yeah, Carol already made up the pictures, Sweet and oh, she had, had a great, yeah, great little granddaughter, boy. That yeah, was, was a gonna, wonderful yeah. day. Yeah, I was mm -hmm. gonna. This is the last picture I had. Oh, and that sweetheart. Who was that little sweetie? Yeah, yeah. that was Carol last year. I, I kid her a little bit, saying she's my best granddaughter. You know. Yeah. <laughs> that was last year. She's a sweetheart. Just that picture shows us how she is. Yeah, mm -hmm. she's mm -hmm. such a good little thing. We get a lot oh, of enjoyment she, out of. She's Carol. a wonderful, wonderful little granddaughter. Yeah, she really is. Mm -hmm. Um. Is there any advice you would give to anyone about living their life? There's a very, just like an essay question. I mean, I mean, any, anything you've learned that you wish you knew when you were, you know, much younger? Mm -hmm. Well, we're still learning, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> One thing. Learning. But, uh, um, you have to work. Mm -hmm. You have to work and you have to be honest. Um, go to church. That's very important. And, um, I don't know. Anything you want to add to that? Uh, <clears throat> well, that's, that's pretty much it right there. But uh, we uh, just genuine respect for one another, and then of course, and uh, raising your kids, uh, Edie sets a very good example, and we, and uh, well, and you do too. Church was very important to us. And uh, we had a minister in Springfield. His name was Charlie Brown. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Remember that name? Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> but we had uh, we're always been a close family and and uh, uh, took care of each other and and uh, of course the, the, everything you do is, is hard work and you, you stick in there and and it rewards come. Mm -hmm. and, you take uh, your vows seriously. Mm -hmm. Take oh day yeah. By day. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it gets gets better all the time. Mm -hmm. I don't. I'm not, I'm pretty much run through everything I've written here. Is there anything I forgot to ask, or anything that popped in your head while we were talking about, while we we're going through this other stuff that I didn't follow up mm -hmm. on? Or mm -hmm. I think we've pretty well covered it. Probably ever. be ten jillion little things you could think yeah. of. You know. <laughs> I've also I, I asked that because. When I've done these with my relatives, they always said, "Oh, I wish I had remembered," mm -hmm. you know, something. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. But uh, it's so hard to call to mind while you're yeah, doing these things. Yeah, mm -hmm. you, 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 over the next two days, it'll come on. Like, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let me just flip through these. See if there's anything I haven't. 
Anything we haven't brushed across or gone into detail with? Um, Anything else? <laughs> Pretty much did it. So, <laughs> survi you survived. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we what survived. kind of a grade we gonna get you? Yeah. Got an A. Probably won't be able to hear it. Yeah. Okay. Well.